this is the continuation of pollination and fertilization we are already completed what is pollination self and cross pollination now we are going to read the agents of cross pollination now there are different agents of cross pollination as you see in the picture entomophily entomophily means the pollination carried by insects is called as entomophily you can see the picture the insects are sitting on the flowers so they collect the pollen grains from one flower to another flower as their body is sticky feathery hairy etc now let's see such flowers which are pollinated by insects are called entomophilous flowers now what are the characteristics of this flowers the flowers are large brightly colored the flowers are scented to attract insects for pollination the pollen grains are sticky or they have spines so that they can get easily attached to the body of the insects and the insects can carry these pollen grains from one flower to the other next anemophily if the pollination is carried by wind wind is an agent of carrying this pollen grains now if it is carried by wind pollen grains are carried by wind it is called anemophily as in maize palm wheat etc such sort of plants you can find this type type of uh, pollination the characteristics of this flowers the flowers are small they need not be brightly colored they are small they need not produce scent or nectar they are often dull in color but their anthers produce large number of pollen grains because during the pollination as the wind is the agent a lot of pollen grains are wasted as as when they are transferred from the anther to the stigma the pollen grains are light dry small and smooth so that they can be easily carried by wind the next type of pollinating agent is hydrophily which you can see in water plants like welsneria hydrilla you can find this type of pollination mostly aquatic plants which are submerged now the flowers are small inconspicuous pollen grains here also they are produced in large numbers as in case of wind pollination pollen grains are lighter they float on surface of water in welsen area the male flower gets detached from the parent plant and floats on the surface of water till fertilization that means they are carried up to the female flowers the next type of pollinating agent is animal other than insects animals we call it as zoophily and like birds squirrels here you can see we call it as ornithophily if it is pollinated by birds the flower kanna flower is pollinated by bird small bird we call this bird as hummingbird the flowers are often large brightly colored so that they are attracted by these insects the sorry birds the petals are fused to form tubes that holds the nectar the length of the tube is often corresponding to the length of the beak of the bird the flowers are the flowers have usually projecting stem and stigmas are ridge the next type of pollination is by pollination carried by bats which is called as cheiropteriphily now mostly you find these plants in the tropical regions bat can suck the nectar they can chew the pollen they feed on insects found on this flowers so this flowers are large they have large pedicels 
and the flowers are large amount they produce large amount of nectar pollinated by bats next topic is fertilization fertilization is the fusion of a male gamete with a female gamete to form a zygote in all flowering plants the female gametophyte is situated deep within the ovary away from the stigma partially they develop male gametes male gametophytes pollen grains are deposited on the stigma during pollination so they are carried these male gametes are carried up to the ovary to fuse with the female gamete so the fusion of a male gamete with a female gamete is called fertilization now there are some steps in fertilization first germination of the pollen grain each pollen grain is received by the stigma which is received by the stigma first germinates that means each pollen grain has a double wall the outer wall called as the wall is called as the in time now the pollen grain the exine splits the in time protrudes out this in time carries two nucleus one is tube nucleus other one is generative nucleus and thus as it protrudes out it carries the these male gametes along with it now second is the entry of pollen tube into the ovule you can see the pollen tube is entering the ovule now uh, when it enters the ovule it carries generative nucleus then entry of pollen tube into the embryo sac when it enters into the ovule the pollen tube reaches the embryo sac this is the internal region this is called as embryo sac containing polar nucleus synergids etc then here the male gametes which are carried by the pollen tube they end into or they enter into this embryo sac where fusion of male and female gamete occurs now what is this double fertilization or triple fusion after the discharge of two male gametes from the pollen tube one nucleus fuses with the egg cell to produce a zygote or the oospore which we call it as syngamy the second male gamete fuses with the secondary nucleus to form endosperm nucleus one is zygote other one is endosperm nucleus endosperm nucleus produces food for the growing zygote since the secondary nucleus is already a product of the fusion of two polar nucleus before fertilization this fusion is called triple fusion one two male nuclei with one female nucleus is called triple fusion as the male gametes participate in fertilization we call it as double fertilization as the fertilization is taking place twice one is one may one male nucleus is fusing with egg cell to produce zygote another male nucleus with the endosperm to form endosperm nucleus secondary nucleus to form endosperm nucleus as the fertilization is taking place twice we call it as double fertilization okay we end up this chapter thank you for watching